Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon in Asia. Good morning in Europe and the Middle East. And uh, good evening to any insomniacs in the Americas listening live to this conference. Uh, my name is Joe Kelly. I'll be the moderator today for the event. Welcome to the launch of Huawei's annual report for the year 2019. 2019 was a dramatic year for Huawei. The drama continues. The world is contending with COVID-19. And for that reason, our event today is virtual, online. Um, this is the first time we've done this event by video conference exclusively. Thankfully, at a time when everybody is self-isolating uh, and distancing, uh, we can all depend on information and communications technology and broadband networks to bring ourselves back together again. Um, Today's event is a media event. It's also being broadcast simultaneously over the internet. Um, we're, we're talking today in nine languages, Chinese, English, French, German, Italian, Spanish, Japanese, Korean, and Arabic. Um, a truly global uh, language lineup for a, lang for a global event. Today's agenda is pretty simple. Uh, we will talk for 30 minutes describing the key points from our annual report and then we'll turn the conference over to the media for their questions and answers. Um, so we'll be here for about 90 minutes. Today we have two speakers, um, both of whom are going to speak in Mandarin with translation. Uh, we have Madame Shi Lan Yi, who's the deputy CFO of the company. Um, she will join for the Q&A. Um, but first I'd like to introduce Eric Xu, Huawei's rotating chairman, to talk us through the key points from the events of 2019 for Huawei. Please join me in welcoming Eric Xu to the stage. Thank you, Eric. Ladies and gentlemen, media friends, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to the launch of a Huawei annual report for 2019. 2019 was a very challenging year for Huawei. With the trust and support of customers and partners, Huawei maintained a robust business and it generally achieved the expected business results. It also laid the foundation for what I'm going to say today. At the very least, it saved me from launching an extremely difficult annual report. The coronavirus outbreak is undoubtedly capturing everyone's attention. We certainly hope it will pass quickly so that uh, everything goes back uh, to normal. Given the outbreak being controlled in China and uh, developing outside of China, Huawei has attached a great importance to the immediate and the full implementation of a prevention and control, ensuring the health and the safety of our employees. We also work to respond and satisfy the needs of our customers and governments in the fight against the pandemic uh, epidemic. As of today, Huawei's production in China has generally been restored. At the same time, we work together with operators to ensure secure and stable network operations and help fight the uh, pandemic with digital innovation and applications. In 2009, Huawei focused on ICT infrastructure and smart devices and achieved a sales revenue of 858.8 billion RMB, uh, RMB a year in year in increase of 19.1% and a five-year CAGR of 21%. Net profit of uh, RMB 62.7 billion, a year-on-year -year increase of 5.6% and a five-year CAGR of 14%. Operating cash flow was RMB 91.4 billion, a year-on-year -year increase of 22.4% and a five-year CAGR of 15%. Uh, Looking back at 2019, Huawei has achieved the robust operations and maintained a stable net profit margin and a healthy cash flow. Breaking it down to the three businesses, consumer business grew rapidly with a sales revenue of RMB $467.3 billion, uh, RMB, a year on year increase of 34%. Enterprise business achieved a sales revenue of RMB. 89.7 billion, year on year increase of 8.6%. The carrier business, impacted by carrier investment fluctuations, realized a revenue of RMB 296.7 billion, a year on year increase of 3.8%. 
Breaking it down to regions, China realized a revenue of RMB 506.7 billion, increased by 36.2 percent. Due to the external environment outside China, the revenue decreased by 1.6 percent year on year. Among them, EMEA achieved a revenue of 206 billion RMB, a slight year on year increase of 0.7 percent. APEC achieved 70.5 billion RMB in revenue affected by carrier investment fluctuations on GMS outside of China, dropping by 30.9 percent. Uh, Americas reached 52.5 billion yuan, up by 9.6 percent. In 2019, the company's Nash Cash reached RMB 258.9 billion, an increase of 32 percent. Asset liability ratio remained at a relatively stable level. Huawei has always pursued and maintained a stable capital structure. Despite the changes in its business and external environment, the overall capital structure remains stable. Technological innovation and basic research are fundamental to Huawei. Every year, we invest more than 10% of revenue in research and development. R&D spend in 2019 was RMB 131.7 billion, or 18.9 um, billion US dollars, accounting for approximately 15.3 percent of annual revenue. Over the past 10 years, R&D investment exceeded 600 billion RMB, equivalent to 86 billion US dollars. We have more than 96,000 R&D staff globally, making up about 49 percent of our total headcounts. Respecting and protecting the IPR is the only way to innovation. Huawei has been respecting and the intellectual property rights of others while it protects its own. In 2019, Huawei obtained a total of a six. 15,243 granted the patents worldwide, of which 5,147 were granted in China, 8,756 were granted in Europe and America, accounting for 54 percent. According to latest data from the European Patent Office, Huawei ranked number one in patent applications in Europe in 2019. Huawei has been granted a total number of more than 85,000 patents around the globe. This is a snapshot of our financial numbers in 2019. You can see those numbers in our financial report. Next, I want to share with you my outlook about the future and also our strategy for different businesses. Since the Industrial Revolution in 1760, uh, human society has never been more prosperous and at the same time has never seen greater social challenges. These challenges include global warming, frequent natural disasters, and also the ongoing coronavirus outbreak, social divide, and increasing inequality. The network has become a basic part of human life. Its impact and the role will only become stronger. Therefore, the cybersecurity challenges will only be greater, not smaller. Unilateralism and economic confrontation are growing such actions based on anxiety and panic are not helping because they are hindering the fixes. Geopolitical uh, unrest are everywhere. Politicizing almost everything is an emerging dangerous trend, which will only add to the turmoil. We're also seeing inadequate drivers behind a sustainable ec uh, uh, economy. Development is at the core of the issues. Without a strong economic growth that can sustain, the problems will be hard to crack. Despite the global turmoil, humankind carries on its perpetual pursuit of prosperity and development. How to overcome the challenges to get rid of turmoil and to achieve a high level of prosperity are top priorities before us. We believe that development should come first. We must not abandon development just because there are challenges. Without a development, there will never be an answer. Second, the global Cooperation must be strengthened. Many of the problems facing the world today are spin-offs of a globalization that cannot be solved by returning to the agrarian age, nor can they be solved with anti-globalization measures. The ongoing coronavirus outbreak reminds us that the problems can only be resolved by strengthened cooperation. Global prosperity and challenges are both rooted in technological innovation. Finding the answer depends on innovation. Resolving the technological challenges primarily depends on technological innovation as well. Innovation is not the ultimate answer, but it's the key for us to get there. 
We need to develop trustworthy standards and rebuild mutual trust. There is a pressing need to come up with a technological innovation that copes with the growing cybersecurity challenges, one underpinned by global cooperation and agreed common standards. It is a global consensus to address social and industry-wide issues, especially the underlying problems in development. One must have solid infrastructure, in particular the ICT infrastructure. However, there is a lack of global efforts. Indeed, many of the problems are attributed to patchy infrastructure across the world. There is a pressing need to review and redefine the policies of infrastructure with the goal of effective enhancement. The ICT infrastructure has become the most fundamental among all kinds of infrastructure. Building a fully connected digital and intelligent infrastructure is the essence of any solution to promote development and address challenges. This is our understanding. This is also our suggestion for global development. It is also what we are working towards. We firmly believe that humanity will enter the intelligent world in 20 to 30 years. According to research by Huawei and some universities, Industry digitalization and intelligence are now in the face of rapid development, bringing a lot of opportunities. In 2019, the global digital economy reached 15.6 trillion US dollars, accounting for 19.7% of the world GDP. The number would expect to grow to 24% by 2025. The digital economy is outpacing the global economy. In 2019, the digital economy grew at a rate 3.5 times faster than the global economy. An analysis shows that over the past 30 years, every US dollar of digital investment brought about 20 extra dollars in GDP, whereas every dollar in non-digital investment could only generate $3 in the GDP. Huawei focuses on the ICT infrastructure and the smart devices that enable digitalization and intelligence. Our investments are centered on connectivity, the cloud and computing, and intelligent devices. 5G featuring ultra-high uh, bandwidth, ultra-low latency, and massive connection will bring automated experience to consumers, accelerate digital digitalization intelligence, and provide a new momentum for social and economic development. We will actively promote global 5G development, work with industry-leading enterprises to build 5G industry applications that can be replicated on large scale and contribute to a thriving 5G ecosystem, helping telecom operators, industry partners, and consumers achieve greater business and uh, societal value. Yes, you as enterprises accelerate digital transformation, they need intelligent IP networks that provide higher bandwidth, reliable SLAs, and intelligent O&M. In 2019, we released a series of solutions such as AI-based 5G integrated barrier network, intelligent zero loss, DCN, and all wireless campus network. We will continue to invest in innovation, carry out joint innovation with customers, and lead the development of intelligent IP networks and standards. Fiber networks are driven by experience instead of bandwidth. Last year, we released the intent-driven or optical network strategy. Huawei's fiber networks provide not only ultimate experience for households, but also more reliable and higher bandwidth connectivity for vertical industries. As a leader in the global optical communications industry, we will remain committed to key research and actively contribute to the standards. In terms of cloud and computing businesses, to meet the requirements of the intelligent world for heterogeneous and diverse computing, we released the Quimpong Plus Ascend computing strategy, illustrating things we do and things we leave to the partners. And this strategy aims to build an open and thriving ecosystem. To better serve our customers, we have integrated organizations related to storage, computing, and cloud services, and established the Cloud and AI BG. In 2019, we released the AI processor SN910, the world's fastest AI training cluster, Alice 900, Huawei Cloud SN cluster service, and Mindsport AI computing framework to complete our full stack all scenario AI portfolio. We have also released the Huawei Developer Program 2.0. We plan to nurture 5 million developers with universities and the community in five years and invest 1.5 billion US dollars to promote the development of the computing industry. We are committed to providing reliable, secure, trustworthy, and sustainable public cloud services and hybrid cloud solutions. Cloud services, AI, and 5G together can well enable data analytics and applications. 
we provide such an enabling platform for the intelligent world while working with partners to facilitate industry digitization and intelligence. Huawei cloud services were developing at a very fast speed and grew more than three times in 2019. Last year, Huawei smartphones shipped a record high of over 240 million units. The global brand awareness increased to 93 percent, winning the trust and love of global consumers with excellent products and experience. Looking into the future, Huawei is committed to fulfilling its vision and mission on intelligent devices. Huawei is dedicated to building a smart life with ultimate experience for consumers in all scenarios. And Huawei adheres to the one plus A plus N or scenario stra strategy through HMS, uh, including App Gallery, Highlink, and other industry software, hardware applications, and service partners. Huawei is able to meet consumers' requirements for all scenarios smart life. In addition, last year we launched a one billion US dollar Shining Star program for device developers. As 5G, AI, AR, and VR become more mature and democratized around the world, Huawei's smart device business will continue to gain traction for its development. The fast developing ICT industry is not without its challenges. Moore's law and Shannon's law are approaching capacity. Therefore, Huawei upgraded its innovation strategy from the 1.0 era of technology and engineering innovation based on customer needs to the 2.0 era of vision-driven theoretical breakthroughs and basic technology invention inventions. The core concept of Innovation 1.0 is to meet customer requirements and challenges, innovate technologies and engineering, innovate products and solutions, and solve the problem of one to N. The key is to help customers and partners enhance competitiveness, help customers increase revenue or reduce costs, and help them achieve business success. Now we are talking about Innovation 2.0 strategy. The core concept is that we believe that the future world is an intelligent one. It's a fully connected one and we will explore theoretical breakthroughs and basic technology inv inventions to solve the world's intractable problems with, one, with zero to one innovation. As a leading global ICT infrastructure and intelligent device provider, Huawei is committed to sustainable development. We work with customers, partners, and third-party organizations around the world to advance the United Nations SDGs. ICT technologies will play an increasingly important role in delivering sustainable development. Last year, we incorporated digital inclusion into our sustainable development strategy. The other three uh, components are security and trustworthiness, environmental protection, and a harmonious ecosystem. Again, last year, we officially released the Tech for All program, which aims to cooperate with multiple organizations around the world in education, environmental protection, health, and well-being. Technology is good, pass it on, leaving no one behind in digital. In terms of security and trustworthiness, we provided network assurance for more than 200 major events and natural disasters worldwide amidst the ongoing coronavirus outbreak. We will honor our commitment to shoulder our responsibilities and work with customers and partners to overcome the difficulties. Huawei's vision and mission is to bring digital to every person, home, and organization for a fully connected, intelligent world. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. <clears throat> so now it's time to hand the meeting across to the media to ask their questions. Before we start, I'd like to invite Madam Shi to the to the stage. Welcome. Um, just some explanatory uh, comments before we start. This is for media who can ask questions. Um, we're going to switch now from nine languages to two. Uh, so Ken Wong is uh, joining us on the stage as interpreter. Uh, Ken will be talking uh, Mandarin to English. Um, if you're online on the, on the conferencing system to ask a question, there's a little button. You click it and you raise your hand. We will see your questions come in. We will try to choose those who ask questions in the order we see them come. For now, every journalist line is muted. Once we've uh, identified you to ask a question, we will manually unmute your line. Please wait until we confirm that we can hear you before you start to ask your question. Um, your voice will be heard here in the room and also uh, on, on the call itself. 
Um, if you're a, a journalist, your video will be blocked unless you've unblocked it. Uh, can I ask, please, that you unmute your video so we, we can see you when you ask your questions? So if you're a journalist that plans to ask a question or hopes to, please unclick the, the, the video uh, link now. Um, so there will be a slight delay, please bear with us. Um, and finally, uh, there's a many journalists on the line. Um, please restrict your questions to one, um, if you can, to give many people an opportunity. We have 60 minutes for the Q&A, so we have time to address many, many questions. So with that, um, I'm going to start um, with China Business News. Number two, Dave Curtin at Rogers, get ready for your question. So can we unmute the line, please, of Lina from China Business News. 请第一个提问的第一财经的李娜然后接下来一个提问者是路透社的David好你好我是来自 呃，现在全球的这个疫情仍在蔓延。那这样的疫情下面，呃，是否会对华为今年的整个经营造成一定的影响？华为的这个供应链上的一个，呃，不好意思，刚刚有些那个断了。呃，这个疫情是否会对华
Since the very beginning of the outbreak, we've taken a whole series of measures to ensure health and safety of Huawei employees. And on that basis, we also work together. Um, we also work to satisfy um, the needs and the requirements coming from our customers and the governments around the world as they fight the pandemic. Till today, all the production activities in China have been fully restored. Therefore, there would be no problem in the short term for us to continue supplying our customers and partners around the world. At the same time, as everyone knows, um, the coronavirus is still spreading, uh, especially outside of China. If uh, that cannot be uh, well controlled, uh, it will cause challenges. On a daily basis, we have been briefed by our supply chain division around how our global suppliers have been doing in light of the current situation. We've also been doing what we can in our power to support our partners and the suppliers as they fight the epidemic, as they help to um, ensure supply to Huawei as well. Um, at this point of the time, we certainly cannot say for sure how the uh, pandemic would, uh, will evolve. If it cannot be uh, well uh, controlled, um, if some individual suppliers of Huawei cannot uh, continue supplying um, to us, it will cause uh, long-term challenges, and it will also cause uh, uncertainty regarding whether Huawei would continue to supply uh, to the market. Of course, this is something that we definitely don't want to see, and uh, we are also working hard on our side uh, uh, as well. Okay, um, thank you. Um, we're going to come secondly to Sharice Pham from CNN. Uh, Sharice, can you hear us? Hi, Charisse. Can we unmute Charisse's line, please? There you are. Okay. Yeah, I see I'm on mute. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Greetings from our Hong Kong apartment. Um, thank you so much for holding this virtual press conference. Um, I, you know, Eric, I hear you when you're saying that uh, China's trying to get back to normal and Huawei's trying to get back to normal. But it just really feels that as the pandemic is sort of rolling out globally, it really feels like we're sort of entering this stage of before coronavirus and after coronavirus. So how do you see Huawei's business being fundamentally changed because of the coronavirus and the pandemic? Do you see changes in how you approach the supply chain or changes in how maybe you approach HR? Um, I've heard that you're now giving virtual tours to carrier clients, for example. How do you see some of the things that you've rolled out because of the coronavirus pandemic? You know, they were sort of emergency measures, but will you continue them in the future? Um,先的记者,首先的话,从这个香港的公寓给大家带来问候,很高兴参加今天的在线虚拟的发布会。刚才的话也听到Eric您提到,中国这边的话正在努力的恢复常态,华为的话也在努力的恢复常态。业务运营上有没有哪些根本的不同每一个家庭，每一个人都会成为一个永久的记忆。Whether uh, the pandemic would mark a di uh, distinct uh, distinction between the two eras of a before and after the pandemic, I'm not sure. But for many families and for many individuals, what has been happening um, would definitely uh, be their unforgettable memory that would always stay there. 其实对华为来讲 
这个该怎么来改进？目前更多的聚焦在确保员工这个健安全的情况下，来怎么来快速响应和满足全球我们的客户，包括包括当地政府对我们抗疫的这个需求。As for Huawei, um, um, there is no time or effort on our part to think about what kind of the changes, what, what kind of improvements uh, to be made in our business operations. Because currently, our priority is how to fastly respond and satisfy the needs of our customers around the world, including governments, in their fight against the pandemic, provided that the health and the safety of our employees can be guaranteed. 大家都清楚，现在全球都在在线会议、在线购物、在线生活、在线娱乐，然后对网络的这个流量需求大幅度增长，然后对网络的这个稳定、安全运行带来了很多相当大的挑战。华为在全球一百七十多个国家有服务，我们在跟这些国家的客户和政府在全力。这个确保网络安全稳定运行，然后同时能够能够保证支撑这些需求的这个快速增长。Um, as we know, in light of the current situation, online conferencing, online shopping, online living, and also online entertainments has been under search. That has caused a dramatic increase of network traffic. That also makes it ever demanding to ensure safety and stability of networks around the world. Huawei serves more than 170 countries around the world. We have been working closely with our customers and also local governments to ensure stable and uh, uh, secure operations uh, of the network. We're also working to address the ever-growing demand uh, from uh, increasing online activities. 当然，这个疫情的这个发生期间，我们也在发现了我们这个在运营管理上这个存在的一些问题，和面临一些挑战。我想这个会驱动我们在疫情结束以后，进一步去重新改进和优化。Uh, of course, during the course of the pandemic, we have also identified some issues and challenges in our operations management that we need to work on. So when this whole pandemic is over, we definitely will take measures to address those issues to drive continuous improvement. For example, it's part of our findings that you don't have to sit face to face to have a good meeting, and that you don't have to really all sit in one room to have a good press conference, such as this one we are having today. 当然，我们也发现，它对这个网络，对五 G 会带来新的看法。Uh, we also uh, find um, what's going on would certainly bring about new perspectives in terms of how people look at the networks and how people look at the 5G. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the question, Charisse. Um, we're going to go to uh, Dave Curtin next. David Curtin from Reuters. Just wait for your line to be unmuted, and then uh, Global Times, Chen Ching Ching, get ready. 我们下一个问题是有请啊，路透社的这个 David。嗯，然后是啊、uh, ，Global Times 的记者啊， uh, 可以准备，是嗯，紧接着下一个问题。Hi David. Hello. We can hear you. Yeah. Um, how much of uh, Huawei's revenue last year came from 5G equipment sales outside of China, and uh, what sort of impact did U.S. pressure have on those sales? 二零幺九年，华为啊五 G 的这个销售收入有多少是来自于中国以外的海外市场？那美国的压力对这个五 G 的销售啊收入有多大的影响？呃，二零一九年我们的五 G 收入，呃，这只是三十多亿美金，占我们公司的收入比例和占我们运营商的收入比例都非常小。Our revenue from a 5G last year was um, more than three billion dollars. So percentage-wise, um, it's very small. No matter when we look at the total revenue of Huawei or the total revenue of our carrier business. So, in fact, in 2019, the whole 5G market was in a 
还没有大的规模发展。As a matter of fact, 2019 was a year when global 5G deployment、um, was just a kicked off. Uh, we haven't seen a、uh, large-scale uh, 5G uh, rollout yet. Uh,当然，5G在全球的这个这个热度是前所未有的，从来没有一个继续能够像5G一样传播这么广，能够让全球每一个人，甚至从这个不管年龄档次都能够知道，其实这样的话对我们所有的消费者来接受这个继续，这
中国政府也别无选择，只能对某些公司采取同样的措施。The China Daily Report said if the measures were taken by the United States, the Chinese government would be left no other choice but imposing similar measures on some companies. 我想中国政府不会让华为任人宰割，或者对华为置之不理。I think the Chinese government will not stand, uh, uh, just stand by uh, watching Huawei to be slaughtered on the chopping board. And I believe the Chinese government may also take some countermeasures. Why why the Chinese government would not ban the use in China market of uh, 5G chips or 5G chip powered base stations, smartphones, and other smart devices provided by American companies out of uh, uh, cybersecurity reasons? Even the situation you mentioned uh, happened, Huawei and also other Chinese companies can choose to buy chipset from, say, Samsung from Korea, MTK from Taiwan, and uh, spread the uh, um, in China, and use those chips uh, to develop um, their own smartphones. Even Huawei, because it has been long since it has been developed, and has made a lot of sacrifices. Even in the long term, Huawei was denied access to chip manufacturing. I believe there will be many Chinese companies that would start working on chipset in the long run. Huawei can still use these companies from China, Japan, China, Taiwan, and other chips to develop and manufacture chips or products. Those could be the sources Huawei uh, could look at, together with other uh, sources in Korea, Japan, uh, Europe, and also uh, Taiwan, uh, as we develop and uh, design our products. If the U.S. government can arbitrarily uh, change the foreign-made direct uh, product rule, uh, that would be a destruction to the global technology ecosystem. And then, if um, the Chinese government also follow with uh, countermeasures, we can imagine what kind of an impact that, that would be on the industry. This type of a destructive ripple effect on the global industry would be astonishing. If the Pandora's box uh, was to be opened, we are probably going to see catastrophic destruction to the global uh, industry chain. And by then, it's not going to be only one company of Huawei that could be destroyed. We it is our hope that the global industry can work together where everyone can focus on the challenges that the industry and also the customers are faced with and work together to come up with a trustworthy products. In that context, I hope uh, this uh, uh, story uh, is not true. Well, otherwise, we might be seeing an endless flow of a disastrous aftermath. If that happens, uh, not a single player in the global uh, value chain can stay immune.
Thank you. Shishani Ching Ching. Um, Omar from uh, CGTN, Simon Gao, Gao Yuan from Bloomberg, get ready, you're, you're coming next. Omar Khan, CGTN. So last year, 2019, uh, you could say probably a tough year for, for Huawei, uh, having that FCC litigation, the entity list. Uh, but also last year, we saw Huawei invite a lot of media personnel uh, to come visit their headquarters in Shenzhen. Uh, a lot of interviews were given by Ren Zhengfei. Uh, I kind of want to go with this uh, going forward this year. What more uh, does Huawei want to do in terms of transparency, in terms of uh, countering those claims by several governments, specifically the United States. How does Huawei want to better showcase uh, who they are uh, to kind of uh, deflect those claims that they have any connections to the government? If you could just expand on uh, what Huawei plans to do going forward in 2020. Thank you. 但同时的话我们也看到华为把很多的媒体记者邀请到深圳华为的创始人任正非也接受了很多的媒体采访所以我想问一下在未来在如何去展示出这个更大的透明度华为在 I think primarily we are going to follow the same approaches that we uh, took in 2019. Thank you. Thank you, Omar. Um, Simon Gao, we're coming to you. Um, Takagi from Sankey News and Masi from China Daily, get ready, you're coming next. But for now, Simon Gao from Bloomberg. Simon, can we hear you? Simon. Okay. Can you hear me? 这个问题给徐总您之前讲说这个美国的这种禁令和这种打击其实对华为的业务的影响还是很大的uh, Eric, you mentioned just now the U.S. Um, um, ban on Huawei's business has had a very substantial uh, impact. Can you share um, your outlook of Huawei's business in 2020 in light of the U.S. ban and the difficulties Huawei is going to uh, face um, in markets outside of China when it comes to the 5G uh, business? Uh, what specific impact can be expected? And uh, can you share with uh, uh, some numbers regarding uh, the 5G smartphone sales uh, in 2020? Um, I, I kept saying that 2019 was probably the most difficult year for Huawei. However, even in 2019, we still uh, had uh, enjoyed very fast growth before May 16th. Um, and uh, we also had a substantial stockpile in our inventory um, to um, respond to customer needs. So, in in that context, I think 2020 will be more difficult. It's going to be the most difficult year for Huawei. Because we will be subject to uh, entity, listing, uh, entity listing throughout the year. And according to some in the industry, uh, Huawei's uh, inventory that we put in place beforehand um, is about to run out. So, 
doing the Guanjin Zi Nian. Therefore, 2020 is going to be a very crucial year uh, to test whether Huawei's supply continuity program can really work in an effective way. On top of that, the outbreak of uh, coronavirus uh, is something unexpected. It brings about um, new unexpected uh, challenges uh, like economic de decline, uh, financial turmoil, and also shrinking market demand. When the global pandemic is still fast developing, our current priority is to first ensure health and safety of our employees and on that basis, respond to the needs and requirements of our customers and also governments around the world in their fights against the pandemic. We don't have the time yet to either forecast or evaluate how our uh, whole year numbers would look like. As a matter of fact, at this point of time, it's very difficult to make an accurate forecast. In 2020, we will try everything we can to continue to survive so that we can release our 2020 annual report uh, at the same time uh, next year. Regarding the sales prospect of Huawei 5G phones uh, in markets outside of China, uh, you all know that after May 16th of last year, uh, all uh, newly launched Huawei phones could not have a GMS pre-installed. In order to protect the interest and also user experience of all Huawei smartphone users globally, Huawei launched HMS. We also hope that uh, the applications from Google can be also hosted in Huawei's App Store, our App Gallery, uh, just like uh, how they are doing with uh, uh, Apple's App Store. Uh, this can help um, deliver uh, more and uh, better applications that can be made available to consumers. That could also help to ensure uh, all, Huawei, uh, all the users of Huawei 5G smartphones outside of China can also be the users of Google's applications. We hope that 5G smartphones it's certainly our hope that we can sell more 5G smartphones in markets outside China, but it's truly difficult for us to make an accurate forecast as of now. Uh, it largely depends on how the progress uh, uh, would look like uh, in terms of our uh, ecosystem uh, around HMS. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, we've lost Sankey New, so um, we're going to come to China Daily next and then to Dan Strom from the Wall Street Journal. Masi from China Daily, are you there? Hi, Hi. 
，嗯，目前欧洲成为了疫情重灾区之一。就您怎么判断疫情对欧洲今年五 G 网络网络建设节奏的影响？中国疫情受到控制以后，明显加快了五 G 建设的步伐和力度。想问您，华为怎么看今年国内的五 G 机会？谢谢。Uh, currently, Europe uh, is one of the regions uh, that's been uh, hit the uh, worst uh, by the pandemic. And uh, uh, um, how the um, 5G network deployment would be affected uh, by the pandemic in Europe. And uh, look at China. China has clearly accelerated 5G uh, network deployment after the pandemic uh, is brought under control. Uh, what's Huawei's view uh, regarding 5G opportunities for Huawei in the China market? Five G deployment in Europe will certainly be delayed to the to the extent and to the time when the pandemic will be brought under control. 嗯，中国是加快了。中国在疫情控制以后，是加快在推进五 G 的建设。目前三大运营商都在组织这个招标的这个过程进程。In China, after the pandemic uh, was brought under control, indeed it has accelerated 5G deployment. Currently, all the three big telecom operators are in the process of uh, uh, tendering. 我相信中国。三大运营商会完成他们年初这个计划的这个五 G 的这个这个建设量，嗯，有可能还会适当的增加一点点。And I believe for all the three big telecom operators in China, uh, they will complete the planned amount of a 5G deployment, or even slightly higher than their uh year beginning plan. 嗯，具体增加多少？一个取决于我们能不能跟得上，然后部署的速度能不能把疫情这个上市的几个月抢回来，还得取决于这个他们有多少预算。Um, in terms of、uh, how many more 5G systems that could be deployed versus the、uh, year beginning targets of telecom operators, uh, that depends on several factors. Uh, the ability for vendors such as Huawei to supply, and uh, whether uh, the rollout would be uh, uh, fast enough so that uh, we can uh, win back the time uh, uh, during the pandemic, and also, of course, uh, whether uh, the telecom operators would have sufficient budget. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Masi. Uh, Dan Strom, Wall Street Journal, we're coming to you, and then we're coming to Celia Chen from South China Morning Post. Dan, can you hear us? I hear you. Can you can you hear me? We hear you. Um, thanks a lot. Um, <clears throat> I was just um, uh, my my question is um, you. So Huawei posted um, your your. Increase for the year was about three years, um, but your revenue uh, grew pretty pretty substantially. Um, to what do you attribute the slowdown in profit growth last year? Um, and um, I was also hoping you could answer why uh, your share of overseas revenue um, declined last year. What what do you? Uh, what do you attribute that to? Is it is it to the U.S. restrictions, or、um, did did you see other other factors at play?、Uh, if you could address that as well, please. Thanks. Uh, 我们看到华为去年的净利润的这个增长速度是啊、uh, 低于前面三年的这样的一个呃、uh, 利润增长的这样的一个速度。您能不能解释一下华为在二零幺九年啊、uh, 利润增速下滑的原因是什么？另外，我们也看到二零幺九年华为海外收入的占比其实也是下滑了。这是由于美国限制的原因吗？还是说有其他的这个啊、uh, 原因造成的？嗯。二零一九年利润这个率下降，这个是很容易理解的。I think it's、uh, pretty、um, easy to understand why uh, the uh, growth rate of our net profit last year uh, 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 decreased. 我们在五月十六号被纳入被美国这个
BIS 纳入这个实体清单以后，我们肯定要加大这个研发投入，来努力不动。After Huawei was added to the entity list on May 16th last year by the U.S. Uh, Commerce Department, the BIS, uh, we certainly uh, uh, had to invest more into R&D to so-called uh, fix the holes. Because at the same time, we have to put in more Huawei to make it possible to make our own supply chain. Because out of a sudden, uh, a large number of uh, suppliers of Huawei could not continue supplying to us. So we had to rebuild, to a certain degree, our supply chain. So in this situation, we 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 for Huawei to continue pursuing as high growth rate in our net profits as 2017 or 2018, uh, we, we, we had to fix the holes, we had to rebuild our supply chain, and the survival turned out to be the first priority. As for the uh, lower uh, percentage of our overseas revenue in our total revenue mix, uh, one of the big reasons for that was uh, no more access of a newly launched smartphones from Huawei to the Google uh, GMS after May 16th. We in year, 这个中国以外的消费者业务，在五月十六号之前是高速增长，五月六号之后快速下降，到第四季度，然后这个稍微有所回升。The consumer uh, business uh, outside of the China was growing very fast before May 16th and was uh, declining very fast after May 16th. It only started to bounce back uh, since Q4 of last year. The impact on uh, Huawei's consumer uh, business revenue in markets outside of China uh, was at least uh, $10 billion. Naturally, uh, the percentage of our overseas revenue uh, as of our total revenue uh, would be smaller. Thank you. Thanks for your question, Dan. Celia from SCMP, we're coming to you next, and then we're coming to, to Brussels, to Politico, to Lawrence after that. Celia Chen from SCMP. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? 呃、uh, ，我想问一下，就是华为手机在国内已经取得了很大的市场份额，但是在国外就有受阻。呃、uh, ，现在国内的厂商也开始进军海外的一些高端市场。想问一下，就是华为手机业务未来是如何平衡这国内外的发展，特别是在目前的这个疫情情况下？谢谢。呃，华为呃 ，smartphone has captured a very big market share in China. While it's not uh, uh, doing um, as well in markets outside of China, we also noticed that many Chinese uh, phone vendors start to penetrate uh, premium uh, segments um, outside of China. So how Huawei would balance its domestic and in international phone business, especially in light of the current pandemic? Our choice is very simple. In China, uh, we are committed to uh, implement our one plus eight plus M seamless AI life strategy. 同时，着力打造我们整个 HMS 生态，来出来支撑起我们的这个手机在海外能够销售。At the same time, we would also work to build the HMS ecosystem 
so that uh, we are able to sell Huawei smartphones in markets outside China. We certainly hope to see continued access of Huawei smartphones to the uh, GMS. But that decision is not for Huawei to make. What we can uh, choose to work on ourselves is to develop the HMS as well as the application gallery that goes with it. Um, certainly, it's going to be uh, very uh, difficult, but we are left with no other choices. We certainly do not position ourselves as a domestic player for the smart devices of business. We certainly look at the global market uh, for this business. Thank you. Come to Brussels uh, tomorrow on from Political Next, and then Sang King Yu to Kanba from Bat, and then Guan uh, Lawrence from Political. Hi, thanks for um, taking the question. I wanted to ask about uh, the European market specifically, uh, in light of the, the measures that European governments are taking to restrict the role of uh, what's called high risk vendors. Uh, a lot of European governments uh, count Huawei uh, as being part of, of that group of high-risk vendors. First of all, um, I just wanted to ask again whether you could uh, break down a little bit the impact of the measures being taken across Europe right now on the carrier business figures in Europe specifically. And then secondly, I was wondering if Huawei considers these measures uh, taken in countries like France uh, the UK, perhaps other European countries, as being discriminatory or unfair in any way, and whether it considers taking steps uh, or actions uh, to address uh, discrimination or unfair unfair competition. Thank you. Uh,来自于布鲁塞尔啊啊，political。嗯，那我想这个问一下具体关于欧洲市场的问题。您是否认为像法国、英国可能还有其他的欧洲国家，他们目前采取的这些措施是歧视性的，是不公平的？如果是的话，华为会采取怎样的这个举措和行动来应对这种歧视和不公平竞争？至少从公开报道上，我没有听
Miami Cardinal Sakagi. Five G service uh, started in Japan last week, uh, and Japanese mobile companies were collaborating with you in the technology of five G. But you are regulated by the government. Uh, please tell me your strategy about 5G in Japan. Uh, for example, joint research or sales of base base stations and mobile phones. Uh, we know that日本的运营商其实现在已经启动了 from all different types of open sources, I have never heard that Huawei is banned from participating in 5G in Japan. We have been uh, communicating with our customers as well as uh, uh, regulators. We have had a no collaboration with the uh, NTT Docomo and uh, KDDI in Japan in the uh, mobile uh, domain. We only work together with uh, SoftBank uh, Mobile. Our current collaboration uh, is still uh, focused on uh, 4G. 这个软银移动也没有部署多少个5G基站 SoftBank uh, soft Mobile uh, till today has not uh, deployed a large number of 5G base stations 所以说我们期待我们跟这个软银移动的合作 能够成4G延续到5G And we hope that Huawei's cooperation with the SoftBank Mobile can be uh, extended from a 4G to 5G 当然这个还, and of course, uh, this is a decision uh, that uh, needs to be made by, uh, by, by the customers. Thank you. Thank you, Takagi. Um, we're now coming to Guangsha. Uh, Yinzi, are you there? Uh, 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 徐总您好Um, you've said uh, that uh, further escalation of uh, U.S. export controls uh, toward Huawei would cause systemic uh, uh, risk. But what if the U.S. government was determined to escalate its restrictions toward Huawei? What kind of an impact that would be on the semiconductor industry of the United States? Uh, 我推荐你去看一份美国邦导体协会，请BCG做的一份报告，叫《限制与中国贸易如何终结美国邦导体行业的领先地位》。这份报告把你这个问题回答得很清楚。I would not share um, in-depth analysis here. Uh, instead, I would refer you to um, uh, a BCG report commissioned by the United States Semiconductor Industry Association. Um, it's called uh, How Restricting um, Trade with China Could End U.S. Semiconductor Leadership. There is a very uh, good explanation uh, in that report around the question you raised. Um, 
a simple search would help you to locate that report. I think the analysis there uh, definitely would be more uh, 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 in-depth compared to uh, the answer that I could give here. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, we've now got a, a change. We've got questions I will read out. Um, the first is from Roberto Company, who's an analyst with Analysis Mason. How do you believe that multi-vendor open RAN TIP solutions will challenge Huawei's business over the next five years? Uh, I think the impact on our business would be negligible. Uh, and I want to elaborate a little bit on Open RAM. So, Open RAM is not a First, Open RAM is not a standard, it's not another 5G standard. Uh, in essence, it's only an architecture and uh, a method of implementation. The Open RAM this design, 五G标准，照样要能够满足运营商对更好、对性能、对这个它的这个性价比的这个需求。Base <coughs> stations um, that are to be designed and developed based on the open RAM architecture and the technologies still have to follow agreed 5G standards. Still have to satisfy the needs of telecom operators around power consumption performance, and a value for money. Open RAN is an open RAN, it's only a 5G or 6G standard. Open RAN advocates openness and open source. It's only an implementation method uh, to implement the 5G base stations or possibly base stations of a 6G. In fact, Looking back into history of this mobile communications uh, industry, um, there was one revolution we saw uh, during the times of uh, 3G in terms of uh, how base station was implemented. That's, why, uh, that's when Huawei uh, released its distributed base station. Before distributed the base station uh, were launched to the market, uh, BBU, the baseband unit, and RRU, the radio unit, were integrated into one equipment and was sheltered in an uh, air-conditioned room. With the invention of the distributed base station from Huawei, RRU was separated and separately mounted uh, on tower. That substantially increased the performance and also coverage of uh, base stations. And uh, that solution also has become uh, a way of implementation of a 4G and 5G base stations, and actually it has become a de facto standard in the industry. In the times of a 2G, 3G, 4G, or 5G, when 3GPP was working on standards setting, 
the focus has always been interoperability to ensure smartphones can interwork with base stations, base stations can interwork with the core network, and base stations can work together with each other across different vendors. That is the foundation to ensure global roaming. And there has never been a time that the 3GPP would look specifically uh, at the implementation methods and the architectures of different vendors. 这个基站的这个实现方式，而且我们这个业界的玩家每家的基站的实现方式并不完全一样，它更多关注的是基站的性能、基站的这个质量、基站的性价比。From the perspective of telecom operators, um, um, it's not that their area of interest in terms of how base stations are implemented. Um, as a matter of fact, the way of implementation between different equipment vendors uh, is different. To telecom operators, they care about the performance, the quality, the value for money of a different base station products coming from different vendors. We know in our industry, we have had a single RAM, and now we are seeing open RAM. No matter if it's a single RAM or open RAM, they must follow agreed and established 5G standards so that all smartphones can interwork with the base stations, base stations can interwork with each other, and base stations <coughs> can interwork with core network. And I single RAM as a open RAM as a common RAM. To me, single RAM is like um, special purpose computing, and open RAM is like a general purpose computing. There has always been this race between general purpose and special purpose uh, computing. Uh, companies such as uh, Intel, they've always wanted to replace today's special purpose computing with a generic pur general purpose computing. But until today, we have seen more and more scenarios and use cases Well, um, special purpose computing seems to be a better fit, especially after the increasing adoption of AI. This is Intel, the Chen CEO, BK. 给我交流的时候，给我期望期望过华为公司的基站，呃，印他的这个叉八六CPU。我当时就跟他讲，你的这个通用基站给我们自己开发的这个专用基站，啥时候这个在性能在成本各方面达到一样的，我说我活络不为
on Huawei's business. 其实大家忘没有看到一件最关键的这个移动通信领域的技术领域，它都是在无线领域，任何 Open Run 也好 ，Single Run 也好，无线的 RU、AAU 都是同样的，都是要达到客户的需求的，都是要能够做到高性能、低成本的。Maybe many people have not noticed what is the most critical technology in the area of mobile communications. That's in the area. Of a radio access, no matter is open RAM or single RAM, you have to uh, come up with a products like a RRU or AAU that can be able to meet the needs of customers around the performance, around the power consumption, and uh, 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 around the cost structure. Thank you. Okay, um, I think we're now coming to the last question, and it's again online. And I guess Eric is one for you. Um, it's from Clinton Liu at McGill University in Canada. Could you give some further information about the new IP standard strategy raised by Huawei? 嗯，这是最后一个问题，是问啊、uh, Eric 的，来自于加拿大啊、uh, McGill 啊、uh, 呀、uh, 大学的。嗯、um, ，想请这个 Eric 介绍一下华为在 New IP 啊、uh, 上面的这样的一个战略。这个 New IP 的问题，我在昨天已经打过一次了。反正我又把昨天打过，再打一次。I actually answered the same question yesterday, and I would answer that question again here. 我很高兴，这个产业界和媒体朋友们对 New IP 感兴趣了，关注了。Uh, I'm very pleased that the New IP is drawing the attention from the industry as well as a friends from the press. 因为 New IP 这个名字是我取的。I gave the name of a new, my, a new IP myself. At the very beginning, uh, it was a different name. Why did I choose this name? Because when I was Um, we had a discussion around the next generation of IP when Huawei was doing research on 5G new radio. And to me, the future mission of the next generation uh, uh, IP was uh, similar to the mission of a 5G new re radio. So I simply wondered why not call it new IP, just like the way we call it 5G new radio. You 始于一九六九年，协议定型于一九七八年，应该到现在将近五十多年的时间了，当然取得了巨大的成功。We can we can do a little bit of search on the internet, then we can realize that IP technology uh, was invented first in 1969, and the protocol was uh, finalized in 1978. It's almost 50 years. Of course, IP has achieved enormous achievements over the past 50 plus years. 原来这个 IP 聚焦在这个把全球的电脑这个连起来，主要聚焦在办公领域。后来这个延伸到了移动互联网，把我们的所有的手机都能够连起来。At the very beginning, IP was designed to connect all the computers of the world for office or productivity purpose. And then it was is extended to also connect all the uh, phones that consumer have to deliver mobile internet services. 但是这么多年来，它一直没法这个它的技术没法满足这些年快速发展的这个工业互联网的低时延、安全等一系列的需求。However, for so many years, IP technology was not sufficient to satisfy the needs of industrial internet, particularly around low latency and security. 5G, 当时的目标也是在这个满足不但增长的这个消费者的这个移动宽带需求的基础上，要满足这个行业的低时延和这个巨大连接的这个物联网的需求。There was a similar story for 5G as well. While 5G was supposed to satisfy the increasing need for enhanced mobile broadband experiences by consumers, 
Um, it also promises to deliver low latency and a massive uh, connectivity that is required for IoT or industrial internet. It's the same story for new IP. While um, it is supposed to satisfy the needs around uh, mobile internet and uh, productivity, it's also supposed to satisfy the needs for industrial internet, things like low latency and security. So, new IP. 其实到现在为止还属于一个研究的这个课题。我们的这个专家，我们的IP专家们跟这个全球的科学家和工程师在一起研究探讨。Till today, new IP is still a research topic. Well, uh, the IP experts coming from Huawei um, discuss and work together with uh, scientists and engineers from around the world. This Currently, IP experts from various countries, um, Italy, the UK, Canada, Germany, Belgium, uh, Spain, uh, etc., uh, are participating uh, freely uh, in the research and the innovation around the next generation of IP. Uh, the, with the hope uh, that the challenges can be well addressed and resolved so that IP can be better prepared for the future. Um, so that uh, the new IP can not only build on what uh, the traditional IP has achieved, but also be able to satisfy the needs for industrial internet. Wasunjinshiba, 也没有大家想象的那么多政治的问题，也不应该把一个继续正在研究的继续话题把它政治化。I was taking uh, an interview with the Financial Times uh, yesterday um, in the afternoon, and they raised the same question. And I said, um, uh, Financial Times should not <coughs> politicize the new IP discussions from the very beginning because this is a pure technical uh, topic. Um, technical experts do not have untold uh, secrets or agenda. They come together only for free discussions about how the future of technology uh, holds. It's not that complicated. There is no political agenda. This is a pure technical discussion that should not get politicized. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, we're now out of time. Um, you may very well have additional questions. Please submit them through your PR manager. For now, I thank you for your participation and for your questions. Please join me in thanking our panel uh, for addressing those, those, those questions, uh, to Mr. Eric Xu and Madam Xi, and of course to Ken Wong and the other interpreters who made today's event possible. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.